Good morning, everyone. Welcome all to Bethel. Well, good morning and welcome to our morning worship service. And this morning, as we come to the Lord to worship Him, let us prepare our hearts and minds in prayer that we may be focused in seeking the Lord. And let us be mindful of of the Lord as we come to him in worship. So let us first seek the Lord in prayer before we come and exalt the Lord in this time of worship. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, so much that you have seen us through another week. Thank you, Father, for this time that we can come to you and worship you. And Father, we ask that you would open up our understanding and our hearts that your word would fall on good ground in our hearts. Father, we we pray that uh, you would be with us as we worship you, that the words we sing to you would be from our heart. Please accept our offering of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As during the week as I was thinking and pondering about the wondrous creations that God has created, it helped me to appreciate afresh all over again how great and awesome God is. You know, I I began to ponder and think about um, the creations of God. You know, for some reason I, um, I thought about the invisible creations like oxygen, you know, without oxygen, we can't breathe. And it brought me back to um, the days where I was a baker making bread. And you know how, how the bread would rise would, is when the yeast would eat um, the sugars in the bread doughs, and it would therefore create carbon dioxide. And you know, we, we can't see carbon dioxide, but for some reason, it reminded me of, of that. And without that, we'll, we we'll just eat unleavened bread all the time. <laughs> you know, it also brought me back, it also brought me the thoughts of, of human beings that God created and how we are made lower than the angels that he also created. But yet, for, our, for the creation of human beings, we are made with glory and honor. And these thoughts of mine really drove the fact that God is indeed the almighty God, the creator who created the universe with his word. And as we begin our time of worship to the Lord, let us turn to our first hymn of praise. And our first hymn is rightfully entitled, Immortal Invisible, Hymn 25. So would you join me as we sing this wonderful hymn of praise to God. Let us sing. Well, thank you for singing our first hymn. For the months of January and February, the pulpit theme has been on the theme of bearing witness. And the theme is entitled, You Are My Witnesses. The message that helped, me, that helped me see a different side of witnessing was how the apostles Peter and John bore witness to a man that was born lame from birth. And this was from the, uh, the book of Acts. You know, apostles Peter and John, they both bore witness by showing compassion. And because they were both apostles sent by God, God had given them his power. And Peter took this opportunity to not only bear witness for the Lord Jesus to this man, but Peter took this opportunity to restore this man that, that was born lame. And in Acts chapter 3, verse 7 to 8, Luke records this, and he writes, And he took him by the right hand, and lifted him up, 
and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with, with them, walking and leaping and praising God. You know, this portion of the scriptures reminded me of the children that I assist at the school that I work at. And, you know, all the children that attend this school um, has a medically recognized disability of some sort, and some of them have very challenging behaviors, very hyperactive. And, you know, the staff would have to deal with, with these behaviors as well. You know, sometimes for recess breaks and lunch breaks, a small portion of the mainstream children, you know, try to avoid our children because um, of the mainstream children, uh, they may not want to interact with our children for some reason, and um, they do not want our children to interact with them. And, you know, it's because of lack of understanding of, of why our children is like that. You know, sometimes a mainstream student would approach one of the staff and they would ask about, um, you know, why, why is so-and-so like that? And, you know, I, I, would give, um, I would take this opportunity and represent one of my students to, um, and say on behalf of this student that, you know, he's, he or she is just, you know, a little different. You know, how Peter interacted with this man showed that Peter has been influenced by the Lord Jesus. And you can tell that he has been with the Lord Jesus. You know, what Peter had done is what the Lord Jesus would have done as well. And you can tell that Peter has definitely spent time with the Lord that the Lord Jesus has taught Peter. And Peter has, you know, graciously responded, has, has responded to the gracious teachings of the Lord Jesus, and he has learnt the virtue of compassion for others, and he showed it to this man. Uh, this morning, our next hymn is entitled, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Hymn 97. Thank you for singing our, our second hymn. Finding faith in the Lord Jesus, you know, it is a wonderful thing to have and to experience. Having faith, uh, finding, having family and friends find faith in the Lord Jesus as well, it is a wonderful thing, uh, even more wonderful thing. And our next hymn before the message is a hymn that sings of having faith in God. And our next hymn is entitled, Have Faith in God, page 408. You know, finding faith in the Lord Jesus and obtaining salvation from him is a precious milestone in someone's life. You know, it, is, it can be a wonderful milestone in our lives when we have found faith in the Lord Jesus as our personal savior. You know, but beyond obtaining salvation through the Lord Jesus, our faith must and needs to grow. And when there will be hard times in one's life, a strong faith in the Lord Jesus is what is going to help us cope in these hard times. And this hymn helps and encourages us to hold onto our faith in God, that through the times of loneliness, unanswered prayers, pain or sorrows, and whenever we have failures, may we have a strong faith that by the grace of God, we would be able to go against these testings of life and be kept by God through having faith in the Lord Jesus. May we find for ourselves faith. May we find faith to be precious. May we find faith to be a precious gift from God. 
And when those who have come against such testings in life, may you find faith in God to be much more precious than gold. So let us stand as we sing this last hymn before um, hearing the message. Please be seated. Thank you, musicians, for your service. And I'll pass the time to Pastor Chris. Before I take up one last message on the theme of bearing witness, uh, this morning we are going to have a person who has mustered up the courage to bear witness. Okay, so to those who are, uh, she's very, very shy in normal circumstances. And um, those who are in uh, need translation, you have probably heard her voice before, but you don't know who she is. So we're going to put a voice, uh, to, sorry, put a face to the voice. And uh, go to, oh, this is good for her. And she says, you know what, I, I cannot, I have to. I'm going to not just listen to God's word, but I'm going to practice it. So I'm glad for her. And she, she has found uh, the courage, and it le needs a lot of courage to come here, up here to speak and to speak of faith in God and what God has done. So commend her for that. Okay, well, let's support and encourage her. I'm going to hand this time over to Alicia. Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia. As some of you may not know me, let me introduce myself. I was born and raised in Malaysia. I have two brothers, and I am the youngest one. When I was a child, I was very quiet, didn't like to talk much, and didn't express myself much because I always lacking in confidence, and I would always stick to my mom. I can remember when the primary school parents day, the only comments that I heard from my teacher telling my mom was, your daughter is so quiet. She never asks questions, and so we can never know what she's thinking about. I was not born in a Christian family, I can say that the fact that I can become a Christian is God's mercy and His amazing grace. Because of my personality, which what I like to stick to my mom, wherever my mom goes, I just want to follow her. Because of that, when my mom wanted to know more about Christianity, she found a church and started to go to church every Sunday. I follow her everywhere, so I also follow her to church. The church member invited me to join the young people group, but I wasn't interested to follow, to know about the Christianity. I went to church because of my mom, but after a while, this following led me to accept the Lord Jesus as my personal savior when I was 13 years old. During that Christmas, the pastor shared his testimony and told us how God changes his life. At that moment, my heart was so touched and wondered how wonderful and amazing that the Lord has changed personal life. Ever since then, my life began to, to change. God built up my confidence bit by bit through serving in YPG and leading worship. As a result, I became a more cheerful person. Of course, my life will not become fantastic after receiving Jesus as my savior. And the Bible didn't say so. Instead, he said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be, good, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I came to Perth in 2012 to a totally different environment than where I used to live. I came to Perth to improve myself, and the first course I attended was an inquiry course. The course took me nine months to complete, and it was really hard for me, as I was educated in a Chinese school. I could remember how bad my English was, and even my teacher told me so. She was unfriendly, and could not understand how I didn't know simple grammar, and she said she wouldn't teach me simple grammar as it was waste of her time. 
I have to learn it myself. And she even requires me to rewrite whole essay, otherwise she would not read it. I was shocked and upset. After the nine month English course, I went on to study advanced diploma in accounting. There was a big decision that I had to make before I complete my advanced diploma. And it was whether I continued to study in university and to get a degree. I could say I already wanted to give up the advanced diploma, let alone continue to a degree. At that time, the decision to continue studying for a degree was impossible. I sought a lot of advice from my family and friends. Undoubtedly, all the answers gave me the same, and that I should continue pursue my study. But for myself, it was not just studying. I was concerned about many things. And also, I know myself very well. I'm not a smart person, and I know my English level was not sufficient for me to survive in university. I prayed to God and committed to Him all things that concern me. And He answered my prayer. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, He said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. By God's grace and mercy, I am completed and graduated from university recently. I have never thought that I would study in university, let alone graduate from university. I am not a smart person, as I mentioned before, and I didn't really like reading books during my high school. I didn't work really hard and put lots of effort in it. The only subject that I liked was mathematics. And now, I am a degree holder. Can you imagine that is how God has provided for me? I am very grateful and thankful of how God had led and provided me during my university life. His words are so real and powerful. His promise will never fail. I will never take it for granted. I could remember I was so stressed after my company law exam. I have no confidence at all, and once I stepped up from the exam room, I got a strong feeling that I will fill this subject. I think all the university students will understand what I'm saying. Every time we finish the exam, we will roughly know where you level up to. That was a nightmare. I was so stressed that I could, couldn't sleep and even woke up in the middle of the night. Although, when I got my result, I couldn't believe my eyes. I did not just pass the exam, I got a distinction. When Pastor Chris invited me to share my testimony this February, I didn't refuse nor accept his invitation. I just gave him a smile. During that day, after hearing the Sunday message, the Bible verse of Acts chapter 4, verse 20 kept appearing in my mind. We cannot but speak the thing which we have seen and heard. God has done so many amazing things in my life and all beyond my thoughts and my abilities. And I am his witness. How can I not speak the thing that I have seen and experienced? So, the week after, Pastor Chris encouraged me and invited me again and said I should share my testimony. And this time, my response was not just merely a smile. I said I will, and this is why I'm standing here today. God has never despised me. Instead, always give me strength to face my struggle and difficulties. I can always draw strength from Him and find comfort in Him. Before I came to know Him, my life or nothing can be part of. I did not have confidence and courage to speak in public because I did not express myself 
well in words. Upon knowing him, I know I can be an overcomer and I know that I can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthened me. I know I can never be perfect and weaknesses still remain, but I know I am special to him as I am faithfully and wonderfully made. Hence, I know no matter what is ahead in life, His grace is always sufficient to bring me through the ups and downs of life. He is the real and awesome God. He knows all my needs and provides for me abundantly. I may not fully understand how Jesus worked in my life, however, I must say that He is the one who is accompanying me through the ups and downs in my life. He has never left me or forsaken me, no matter how unworthy I am. I do not deserve all this, yet He is the great and wonderful God that loved me unconditionally. You're talking about five years ago. She cannot speak English five years ago, 2012, right? 2017. Uh, to go from nothing, doing English course, to a diploma, to a degree, to getting distinction for company law. She beat me, you know. <laughs> I know. I know what I got for company law, and I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> she got higher than me. It just tells you that what we, where we speak, it's not speak of God. It, well, look, at, it is, look at what God has done in our life. And you cannot, but like she, uh, Alicia said, cannot but speak of the Lord. And I encourage her because I know out there, there are migrants here. There are people who are struggling here too, wondering, you know what, I want to make a, a life. Can God help me? And I hope this morning you have that answer. Can God change one's life and one's destiny? That is a very special uh, you know, word that she just gave to all of us. And may we all be encouraged to bear witness. She has no, she said, no confidence. I thought, that's pretty confident. No confidence. She looked down on herself. She said twice, I'm not smart. Don't ever say that again. That's the last time you say that, okay? If you're not smart and you got a degree, then the rest of us are in trouble. <laughs> right? So look, don't, don't, don't say that. Okay? Don't, don't tell anyone they're not smart. I like what you said at the end. We are fearfully, wonderfully made. God made us the way we are. That we will bear witness of his glory. Okay? Well, we're going to pray together for a while. And uh, we're going to take up one last message on the theme of bearing witness. And I hope you will be deeply challenged and encouraged to go and just do it like Alicia. Muster up the courage and, and bear witness. Okay? Well, let's pray. Our Father, we pray that as we take up one more message on the subject of witnessing, may our hearts be truly challenged and encouraged by your word that you have not made a mistake when you called us, that you knew who we are, what we will be. May we find that understanding and faith to believe that we are capable and able to speak of our faith in you confidently too. We pray for this word that is to be given. May it encourage our heart to bear witness once again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to take a look at the book of Acts one last time uh, for this series of witnessing. Okay. Now we begin with first witnessing collectively. As a church, the first few chapters of the book of Acts focuses on the church, how it began. As a church, the, the disciples of Jesus, you know, they struggled. How did they begin? They formed the church and they witnessed. Right? And then we look at individuals. In this case, Peter. From uh, Acts 1 all the way to chapter 12, you see Luke records. Look at Peter. Look how he started. He didn't know very much. He wasn't confident. But when he owned this calling, he, he attempted, he learned, he grew, and became an outstanding witness for Christ, right? 
Peter. So there's collective, there's individual. Now, we are going to take a look at the Apostle Paul now, another individual. And we're going to take a look at Acts 26. In the book of Acts, Luke follows two individuals in particular. One is Peter, and the other one is Paul. Right? If you want to break it up, Acts 1 to 12, Peter. From 13 to 28, Paul. You're going to see these two. Why just two? Well, part of the reason is Luke wants to help people. You see the differences between these two people. And yet there are similarities in its principles and its truth that can be applied to all of us. Peter is a very, like you look at Peter, right? He's very likely to be a witness. Of course, he was called by Jesus. He's part of the original disciple, isn't it? And then he followed the Lord Jesus. And it's like a natural progression. But when it comes to Paul, he is very unlikely. He is a very unlikely witness for Christ. And so that answers our question. What if I, you know, I never, I'm not a part of the original group. I wasn't there. Alicia said I wasn't born in a Christian family. I didn't have that privilege, didn't have that background. How likely will I be a witness for Christ today? Well, here is a very unlikely witness too. Okay, well, let's take a look at Acts 26 concerning what he says. Okay. And he wanted to share very candidly now. The context here is he stands before King Agrippa, a Herod, the king of Judea at that point in time, to give a defense for his faith. And so he was given the opportunity and he tells Agrippa and he says, look, you are permitted, Agrippa says to him, you're permitted to speak for yourself. And so he begins and he tells him, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things which I have been accused by the Jews. The Jews have trumped up charges against him because of his faith in Jesus, because of his preaching the gospel, and there was opposition against him. How likely is it this person would be such a great witness for Christ? Take a look at his, he, he gives a very candid, uh, right, shared very candidly about his past. In verse 4, he says, My manner of life from my youth. This is how he grew up. He grew up, he spent from the beginning, my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. Okay, we're not Jews, very hard to understand this. But all who are Jews will know. They knew me from the first if they were willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Not all religions are the same. Some religions are very anti-Christians. This one in particular is. So when we say all religions are the same, one, you don't understand uh, all, all religions. Two, you're making a comparison here because there are religions that are anti-Christianity. This was one of them, Judaism. Right? This, and in the, even in their own religion, there are different sects. There are some strict. There are some even, the, this is the extreme case. He is the strictest sect of his Pharisee as a Pharisee. Today's equivalent, he is almost equivalent to the ISIS kind. He's an extremist because of who he is. And he, he's, this is what he says, right? And in verse 9, candidly, he says, Indeed, I thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Contrary. This I also did in Jerusalem. Many of the saints I shut up in prison. So he goes and throw peoples in prison who are Christians. If there was one person who is very anti-Christians, this guy is. He throws them into prison. He will receive authority from the chief priest. 
and then when they put them to death, he will cast his vote against them, meaning he support death for the Christian, to the Christians. And then he says in verse 11, I punish them often in every synagogue and compel them to blaspheme. In other words, deny your faith. This was him. Being exceedingly, confession here, enraged against them, I persecuted them to foreign cities. This was him, right? He was very antagonistic to the name of Jesus. He used to be exceedingly enraged against Christians. He would punish, persecute with deep hatred for them. How likely for a person like this to be a champion for the Christian faith? What happened? Now, he tells them what happened. In verse 12, he shares his conversion account. And this is what we speak about. Every one of us as a witness has a conversion account. We never forget it. We remember where we used to don't know the Lord. We used perhaps, maybe you're not like Paul, but didn't like Christians very much, didn't understand Christians. Some can't be bothered, but some anti. Very anti. Well, he was one very anti one. Right? And then... He remembered what the Lord said to him. Well, let's take a look at this. He says, he very, remember very, very clearly, it took the power of God to transform him. It certainly did. So we want to learn from this all the principles. We may not be like Paul. We may not be like Peter. But what are the principles? There are differences. Peter was different. Paul is different. But there are principles that are the same. And these are the principles we want to learn. Okay? And here is the first one, conversion. His salvation was genuine, obviously. Look how God changed his life. Right? That was his past. This is what he became. Now, he, he talks about it. He remember his conversion experience as if it was yesterday. Okay? Acts 9 records his conversion. Acts 26 he recalls it. Now, a long time has passed, and he says, look, while I was journeyed to Damascus with authority, right, he was persecuting Christians at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun. Okay, don't, you're, you're not going to look at the sun, right? This is brighter than the sun, shining around me, those who journeyed with me, and when we all had fallen to the ground, he was literally knocked off his high horses, literally. Literally. And then he says, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the gods. So he remembered what the Lord said to him, and his reply who are you, Lord? See, there was a time when Paul didn't know the Lord. He didn't know who Jesus was. And then we read, the Lord replied and said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. That was his starting point. There was a conversion. This is where you do things that which you don't know. You are very zealous for that which you don't understand until he met with the Lord. That's the our same thing. We remember the word of the Lord to us. We remember how it convicted our heart. We remember last time we didn't know the Lord. Now we do. Conversion. And that changed his life. Right? Now, we go on further. Same, first principle. Conversion. Second principle that... All of us as witnesses will experience the whole idea of understanding our calling, chosen. Chosen to be a witness. Peter, chosen. Paul, chosen. Now, this is a very, very interesting phrase. Okay? Now, you've got to require a little bit of comparison of text here. And so Jesus said to him in verse 16, Rise, 
Stand on your feet. For, uh, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. Right? And then and says to him, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. Okay? The, the phrase to make you is actually one word. Okay, now you've got to do a, bit, a little bit of Bible study here to all those who are, uh, we, we turn to the scriptures. This was last week's message, Acts chapter 10. Turn to Acts chapter 10. And in verse 41, Remember this text? This was read last week, what Peter said. And then this was Peter's testimony, and he said, right, how the Lord appeared to them and then showed, him open, uh, showed himself openly. Same, similar. Verse 41, not to all people, but to witnesses chosen before by God. You see the phrase chosen before by God? And to make him is, a, in English, is, a, is different. Actually, in Chinese, it's also different. But in the Greek text, it is, di- it is the same word. This word is, is just, there's no English equivalent. This is called a translational phrase. The translator did not do a literal translation. He wanted to, they wanted to help the readers understand what's going on. What is God doing? If you want to take the literal translation, this word is handpicked. Peter understood his calling. He is chosen, not just chosen. You are handpicked. Paul, you are handpicked. You are specially handpicked. You are unique, the best person to bear witness where you are. And that's absolutely amazing to consider that. That we are handpicked by the Lord to be his witnesses. Who can bear witness better than you? It will be you. To your family, to your friends, not me, not the pastor, you. You see, sometimes we feel Now, the best person to bear witness to my son is his friends or the youth leader or the pastor. What if God handpicked you? You're the one. And I will make you. That's what Jesus said. Follow me and I will make you fishes of men. The best person to help is you. And it's absolutely true for Paul. He didn't understand this in the past. He was a Jew. That's why he is, he is able to speak to the Jewish people the way he is very happy to speak before King Agrippa. Uniquely, Paul, Peter can't do this. Agrippa is, of course, from the royal family, raised up in Rome. So he knows both Jewish customs and Roman protocol. Guess who Paul is? A Jew raised up in, Ro- in a city of Rome called Tarsus. Citizen Roman. That's why he could appeal to Caesar and he will stand before Caesar to bear witness. Uniquely Paul, which is incredible. You are handpicked. This is conversion, understanding, chosen in God's purpose, for this purpose I have, to handpick you, to be a minister and a witness. Now, by the way, the word minister has several words. You can use one word is where we get the word deacons from in our church, we, people who serve the Lord, deacons, serve tables. It's a very, very humble word. And the leaders use, often used for church leaders, deacons, diakonos, or deaconess, uh, female form. But this word is lower than the deacon. It is the assistant to the servant. 
Huh? You are not just a servant, but the assistant. You are called the assistant. Right? There are some of some people, some here, you are EAs, your educational assistants. You're not the teacher. Here, the assistant. It can be a humbler uh, occupation in that sense, but this was the assistant to the servant. This is where you begin. Paul never forgot his beginnings. He used to be one who is up there, giving authority, commanding. He was literally knocked off his high horses, literal, to be offered, would you be an assistant for me? You want to take it? And he recognized who is speaking to him now, the Lord. And he says, I am not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He says, God, this is given to him to be an assistant to be a minister and a witness. Paul literally began as an assistant. He was an assistant to Barnabas. It was Barnabas and Paul. He was Barnabas' assistant. Imagine that. So you start out humbly. Can you do humble things and be a witness? Absolutely. God does not despise the humble. So when you have humble work, you know, mothers out there, you are a whole, some of you have the privilege to be a stay-at-home mom if you have that privilege. It is not less. I salute all full-time mothers. I really do. I look at my wife, I say, how do you do that? Right? You are the CEO, CFO, COO, all the O's. Chief operation, you know, finance controller, you go run the house. You know, leave me with one day, it'll be chaos. And I'm glad those who can be full-time uh, mothers. No, not everybody has that privilege, of course. Sometimes mother, father both have to work, and you do have to. But being a stay-home mom is not less. No work. God does not look at it. You be a witness wherever you are. The world may not look at it as great, but you know what God looks at? An assistant. He'll make me an assistant. Yes, this is good. You bear witness where you are, and you are handpicked for this task. To me, that is such an awesome thought. An awesome thought. How did Paul respond to this? Now, you can. God can choose you. You can reject God too, you know. It's not a given. Okay, God choose me. I cannot reject him. Oh, yes, you can, because Israel rejected God. They did not fulfill their calling. They didn't understand their calling. So this is why we need to talk about an understanding of our calling. The understanding of what God has chosen us. You are handpicked. Now, Paul responded well. And he said in verse 20, chapter 26. Okay? And he said this is his response. Okay? Now, before we go to the response, right? We, we must look at what God has chosen him for, with divine purpose, I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister or to handpick you for this uh, purpose here, and then send you, now verse 17, take a look at this. So to send you, now I'm going to, I will be there for you, verse 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as the Gentiles, there will be oppositions, there will people be against you, but don't you worry, I will deliver you. And I will send you, and he sends him to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. This is what bearing witness is about. To turn people from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith it be. That was what Paul was being sent. And the best person to do it was Paul. The best person to do the, what Peter could do would be Peter. The best witness of how you should witness is you. It will be you. Handpicked. Paul's response, verse 19, Therefore, King Agrippa, 
I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Now that will tell you, can you disobey the Lord? Certainly, you don't understand it. Yeah, whether there's a conversion or not. See, it begins with a true, genuine salvation experience. The Lord becomes real to you. You never forget that. And He's called you. He's handpicked you. You are my witness. Now you know the Lord. He's the Lord of your life. My response, therefore, naturally so, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. But declared first to in Damascus and so and so forth. And he just tells people, this is what I've been doing because of obedience to the Lord. Was it, was it tough? Is it easy? Of course not. He says, therefore, verse 22, having obtained help from God. You start somewhere. And you're going to recognize your weaknesses. You're going to recognize that your, your lack of skill, your lack of understanding. Seek all the help you can find. Obtain help from God. And so Paul says, to this day, you know how it's not just starting out. To this day, I stand. How am I managed to stand? God help me. Now, look at this phrase here. Therefore, I obtain help from God. To this day, I stand, witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things. Remember what Jesus said to him? Rise, stand. That was when he started. Many years later, he says, I stand. Not everybody stands. After a while, they get worn out, they get tired out, they begin well. And after a while, they lose their way. You know, they, they can't, they, what, am I, what am I supposed to do with my life? Stand. And you stand firm, stand consistently, stand strong, stand courageously, stand firm on the commitment I made to Christ to be His witness. And that is such an awesome thought. The word stand here, histamine, it is the whole idea of strength. I stand for, to this day, bearing witness to both wherever God needs me to be, whether it is those who are humble people or before a king called Agrippa, to the small and to the great. These are the principles we are not Peter. We are not Paul. Of course, we can never be. But what we can be is what God has given. You are chosen. This is the principle. This is the similarity. Right? There are differences between Peter and Paul. But there are similarities. It is the similarities that we learn. Conversion. Called with a chosen for a purpose. Understood commitment to bear witness year after year until we have fulfilled all that the Lord has called us to do. And that's our challenge as we conclude this series. Have we begun to understand this? Begin with understanding. Do we understand chosen? What a privilege to be handpicked, to bear witness for the Lord. Nobody can say it better than you. To believe that. To say it can be done. It can do this. Don't tell yourself I'm not smart. Right, Alicia? Don't put everybody down by saying that. Right? You are smart. Goodness. Good degree holder. Smarter than, uh, wow, a lot. But it's not the point. Is whether you are a humble fisherman or a great scholar like Paul, we all begin in the same. Con humbly conversion. Look at the change in life now. We're no longer the same person in the past. We're no longer angry, not filled with hatred, not filled with prejudice, and not filled with bitterness. 
filled with something else, filled with the grace and mercy of the Lord, filled with the power of the Lord that has changed and transformed our life. And the best person to turn people away from darkness to light is the person who has turned from darkness to light, you. Is it not true? That's your testimony. You were once darkness. This is John Newton's testimony. I once was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You turn from the grips of Satan to the power of God. You are freed. Isn't that what it is? You have received forgiveness of sin. You understand what it means to be pardoned, to be forgiven. It has humbled you. And the best person to speak of forgiveness is the person who has been forgiven much. You have received an inheritance. You are a child of God. You feel the joy, the, the contentment of belonging to the Lord God as his children. The best person to speak about that are those who are children of God. In your language, if you speak Hebrew, then speak Hebrew. If you speak Greek, then speak Greek. If you speak Chinese, then speak Chinese. Oh, Mandarin, Cantonese, that's also a dialect, whatever dialect you are. The heavenly language is not a strange language. The language that came from heaven and spoke to Paul, dialectos, same word as the word tongues, is a language, not some, I don't know what I'm talking about. Come on, read the text yourself. It's a language. Specifically, what spoke to Paul's heart? The Hebrew tongue. That's a language. You speak your language to the people wherever you are. All right, young people speak a different language. They, they literally speak in a different tongue. Sometimes, you go, what are you talking about? <laughs> Not that they speak a totally different language. They, you know, this is, whoa. They, they sometimes use phrases, and I look at it, and I say, like Alicia, I smile. I don't know what they're talking about. It's neither yes or no. So I have to learn. Okay, what are you talking about? Explain. My daughter shared with me that, Dad, I speak four languages. Wow. So what are they? One, I speak English. Yeah, me too. Right, good. I speak Chinese. Really? Saying good morning and saying good night does not constitute to a language. But in her mind, yes. So I speak Italian. See, she can count to 10. That's a language. I'm trying to tell her, just because you say a few words, it doesn't equate to a language. But in her mind, see, as a child. And then she tells me, I speak pig Latin. What on earth is that? So she read in her little book, and then that says, okay, pig Latin is, you take, I, I can't even remember. Is a made-up language. Is that a real language or not? No, some people speak in Star Trek language, no? They learn the language. Some speak in uh, Star Wars. They love it so much, they speak. I don't know what language is that. They can literally speak Lord of the Rings language. They are so into it. It's incredible. What language will speak to your heart? The language you understand. In other words, the Lord spoke in a word that he understood straight to his heart. And he understood the Lord's word. And he understood where he is. He finally understood. Do we understand that the Lord has called us first to salvation, to his saving grace, to be part of his kingdom, to be an ambassador for Christ, to be his witness? Don't look down on yourself because God doesn't look down on you. You are special, truly. You are handpicked for the right task. Don't despise that. It doesn't matter if you used to be a very wretched sinner like Paul. That was really bad. You get any worse than this? Say, but I'm not like Peter. I, well, Peter was knucklehead, you know. 
stubborn like anything. And yet, here is the Lord, and he changed him too. To be that witness, to stand before, to proclaim, to turn people to God. May we bear witness wherever we are, to whoever we can. You are the best person. You are handpicked. Not anyone else, you. It could be to your parents. It could be to your children. It could be to your grandchildren. You can say it better than me because you are chosen for that task. Let's pray together. Our Father, we pray that our hearts would be deeply challenged this morning to understand that we have been specially chosen by you to bear witness for you. What a privilege that you do not despise us, that you look beyond our sins to what we can become. Lord, help us to be encouraged to fulfill this wonderful calling from you, a heavenly calling. Give to us your grace to seek you deeply, earnestly, to obtain all the help that we can find to bear witness effectively. We pray that you would hear this, our prayer, even as we give an offering. We ask that you would bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul was called an apostle of love. What a change. A man used to be filled with so much hatred and bitterness because of race. This is a very racist person. To a person who became an apostle to the Gentiles, to the very people he wanted to kill. To Christians. That is transformation. How was he being able to fill with so much love? Well, because he was shown so much love. The Lord appeared to him not to condemn him because the, you know, God can appear to him and judge him and condemn him and trial him for all his sins. You have broke them all, murder. Right? What big one he could have. And yet the Lord appeared to him, showed very much mercy, called him, chose him, and even gave him the privilege to bear witness. That's how much love he felt. That lifted him out of the darkness that he was in. That lifted him up out of a path that could have led to death. He became that apostle that even as he spoke to people, to people who wants to jail him, he spoke with such calmness, not with hatred, but he bore witness. Now that is really special. Love lifted me. It was love that lifted the heart of Peter and changed his life. It was the love of Christ that lifted Paul out of wherever he was in darkness and uh, just really uh, sinfulness. It is certainly the love of the Lord that lifted me out of my sins too, saved me. Understanding you are handpicked to bear witness. Love lifted me. And this is a wonderful hymn to conclude. May this be your song to sing all the days of your life, that you would sing of the love of Christ that lifted you up to be that Raise you up, in other words, stand, rise up, be that witness that God has chosen you to be. Let's sing this together. 505 in the hymnal, if you're using the hymnal, all three stanzas. Let's rise as we sing this together. Let's pray together. Let's bow as we receive the Lord's blessings before we go from here. And now may this great God of love who has loved us, chosen us in love before the foundation of the world and has now revealed this grace through his son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile us to himself, 
to restore us, to make known to us his glorious plan that we will be his witnesses for him. May the Spirit of God embolden us, strengthen us to bear witness this day. And in the days to come, to continue to learn rich and deep lessons of witnessing through bearing witness itself to the things that we have seen and the things that the Lord will one day reveal further to us as we bear witness. For the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, till he comes and returns for us to receive us back to glory one day. And in his name we ask. Amen.